Bend and Scoop is brought to you by Harder Concepts, the best bars in North Dallas. Eat, drink, party harder. I love Bend and Scoop, man. You want to hear some music? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, today you're going to get all the music you want. The request lines are now open, KGFJ Soul Radio. Do it now, man. Request lines are now. It's open, man. Got any Blue Oyster Cult? No, I don't have any Blue Oyster Cult. I ate 34 pairs last time around. Where were you? I was that close to working at 7-Eleven, you know. Pass the word along. Tell the men it's time to shoot the moon. Shoot the moon! Not out there on the microphone. On the microphone. Shoot the moon. Shoot the moon. The attitude dictates that you don't care whether she comes, stays, lays, or prays. I mean, whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. It's strawberry! Oh, strawberry. Hey, what's happening, man? How you doing? This is my friend. Hey, how you doing, man? What you looking at, man? Oh, no, nothing. <laughs> I, I wasn't looking. I was just... I wasn't looking at his neck, man. Can you honestly tell me that you forgot the magnetism of Robin Zander or the charisma of Rick Nielsen? That's kid stuff. Kid stuff? Well, how about the tunes? I want you to want me. The dream police. Da -da 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 -da. Build your muscles picking strawberries. You know, band of stoop. Maybe I can get you a job with United Fruit. I got a buddy with United Fruit. Start with strawberries, you might work your way up to these goddamn bananas. Win, boy. Are you going to get your act together? We're creating a society of cell phone crazed, marijuana smoking zombies. to you not quite live from lukewarm tallboy studios deep in the land of gar this is bend and scoop the podcast featuring music mirth and minutia focused on exposing artists you probably haven't heard but should i'm bob and i'll be your tour guide on this amazingly asymmetric auditory adventure as we journey to the center of your cochlea welcome to episode 60 bend and scoop is brought to you by harder concepts the best bars in north dallas Visit one of the five great Harder Concepts locations in DFW, which includes Scruffy Duffy's and Ringo's Pub, both at the shops at Legacy and Plano, Saintsbury Tavern at Austin Ranch in the Colony, the Mucky Duck at Addison Circle in Addison, and Addison Ice House at Vitruvian Park in Addison. All five Harder Concepts locations have great food, live music, an amazing beer and spirit selection, and a wait staff that's second to none. Whether you want to hang out with old friends or meet some new ones, there's no better place to get together and watch your favorite sports or hear some awesome tunes. Eat, drink, party harder. Joining us at the end of the show to play a round of Is That Your Vinyl Answer? in the Groovin' After Party will be our very special guest, Martin Popoff, from the History in Five Songs podcast. We spread the gospel of vinyl here at Bend and Scoop, so be sure to tell us all about your favorite neighborhood record store by posting to at Ben Scoop on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Spin Mom and Pop. Our record store of the week is Wax in Facts in Atlanta. You can follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Wax in Facts, on Facebook at Wax in Facts 76, and you can check out their website at waxinfacts.com. We're going to open with a song called Shaken by a band out of Portland called The Cry. This is from their 2014 album, Dangerous Game. Kids around come from miles around. You in some tech push down town. We live in a place to make the trip. But if they find a way, we'll do it. It will make them sick. We're just dancing and we're doing it right. We want some moves, but we're up all night. Going inside, outside. Shake it like a 
That was the Jacuzzi Boys from Miami with a song called The Pits. It was a single from 2020. Campfire Songs is a podcast where I get together with my buddies Todd, Jim, and Tom to share and discuss songs with each other. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Songs Campfire and give us a listen for more great music. Gonna have the very rare twofer from Edmonton starting with a band called Real Sickies from their brand new album Love is for Losers. This one's Give and Take.
The boss of the kitchen. Get in and out of the kitchen quick. If you're not working, you stay out. If you don't, I'm going to cut off your balls and serve them to the senior girls on hamburger rolls. Closing out our twofer from Edmonton, there is Faith Healer from their 2017 album, Try That Was Suffering Creature. Have you ever wanted to host a podcast? Well, all you have to do to join the Mike Hunt and host your very own episode of Assume the Juxtaposition is send me your topic idea to lukewarmtallboy at gmail.com. You can follow Assume the Juxtaposition on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at AssumeTJPod. Here's a band from Detroit called Nick Pionti and the Complicated Men from the 2020 album Downtime. This is Upper Hand. I fell for you on a slippery slope. I was holding out for a glimmer of hope. Didn't care if I was ever coming to. Tell we would make it for miles without missing a beat or faking a smile. You took me somewhere that I never knew. You got the upper hand. I fall into your grass if I'm lucky.
music's on us. WJAR. Georgia with the album title of the decade problematic for the people that was Drew Beskin with going all right for you it's a brand new release give it a listen how many is a podcast where I get together with my friends Jesse Jr. Gary and Scott to debate a variety of pop culture topics including movies sports TV music and more you can follow how many on Twitter at how many podcast and listen at how many podcast.com Here's a band from Seattle called Zebra Hunt off 2017's In Phrases. This is what I want.
Yeah. You know? <laughs> Thought I was gonna reach out for the pulpit. No shit. <laughs> then disaster hit. And I got the whiff of pussy and I loved it. And I decided to dedicate the rest of my life to it. <laughs> you? College next year. Pussy, maybe. <laughs> That was Barron's Whitfield and the Savages out of Boston with the title track from their 2018 album Zigzag Wanderer, apparently about somebody in search of rolling papers. <laughs> Pausable Deniability is a monthly podcast I co-host with my pal David Miller, which you can follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Pause Deny. We post new episodes on the first day of every month. And don't forget to stick around for the end of the show when we'll be joined in the Groovin' After Party by our special guest, Martin Popoff from the History in Five Songs podcast. Here's one from way, way, way back in 1974, re-released in 2018, band out of Hamilton, Ontario, home of Martin Short. This is a band called Simply Saucer, the album Cyborgs Revisited, and the song is Dance the Mutation. <laughs> i
step into the Sanyu world of high fidelity. Real audio components together in a matched stereo system, a sound that's really sensational. Plenty of power plus exciting features like Dolby. It's fabulous. The music that's live, was The Creation Factory out of LA off their self-titled 2018 album, I Don't Know What To Do was the song. If you want to listen to all this great music without having to hear me ramble between songs, be sure to check out our Bend and Scoop Spotify playlist. If we played it and they have it, you can listen to it there. And if you enjoy listening to what we do here on Bend and Scoop, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcasts. And if you really enjoy what we do here at Bend and Scoop and would like to show your support, please feel free to drop a little something in our virtual tip jar at patreon.com slash bendscoop. If you're feeling hungry and need a snack to get you through the rest of the show, reach in and grab yourself a big handful of gorp. In a recent statement, leading members of your community have condemned a new motion picture entitled Gorp as being totally unredeeming and offensive. Here, in a rebuttal, is the producer of GORP, Mr. I.M. Gross. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Considering only a very few of your so-called concerned citizens have actually seen my new movie, I've taken this opportunity to show you, the paying public, a selection of scenes, proving once and for all that if Gorp is offensive, it's equally insulting to everyone. Gorp is a film made without any prejudice to sex. I'm just here to have fun. Sex and fun. No commitments. Just like the guys, right? Religion. Age. All right, you little grunts, you want seconds, huh? Animals. <laughs> Weight. <laughs> or complexion. On the plus side, Gorp is contemporary in its treatment of sexual morality. Honest in his depiction of rebellious youth. Outspoken in language. <laughs> and completely unsanitary. Gorp, the comedy that mouths off with something to offend everyone just when you thought it was safe to go to the bathroom. Gorp. People listen to people. So listen, people. Welcome to the Grieving After Party. Come on in and pour yourself a cold one. Joining me now for our Grooving After Party here on Bend and Scoop is Martin Popoff from the History in Five Songs podcast. Welcome, Martin. Yes, thanks for having me, Bob. Very cool. Well, listen, I really appreciate you being on. Tell everybody a little bit about History in Five Songs. Well, uh, it's a concept I came up with in about five minutes when Christian uh, asked me to join up uh, with the team and... Uh, no, I, I kind of sorted out something that I that I wanted to make sure uh, was simple. Um, that was going to be uh, was going to just involve me talking and not having any guests, so I can just on the spur of the moment come up with a great idea and just uh, decide to go for it and blab it in. And um, 
And yeah, we we talked about a few of the parameters. I, I wanted to make it something where I, I wasn't going to go in and, and learn any editing or do any editing. And so essentially, um, it's just me talking. And then uh, the fine Pantheon team, Christy over there, actually uh, strips in five 30 second clips. And what it is, is I just come up with a theme uh, that has five examples that feed that theme or that argument. And, uh, and I just talk for, you know, about 25 to 30 minutes and they, and they strip that in and I've not missed a week since I've started. So I'm at 108 at this point. Um, you know, it's mostly, mostly classic rock, hard rock, heavy metal, punk, prog, that kind of thing. Just the old dad music that I grew up on kind of thing, mostly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I've, I've thrown in a few lessons on like the mod revival and, and a few other uh, interesting things along the way. And, it, and each episode doesn't have to be just the one genre. It just has to be the examples of a certain thing. Just to, just kind of kind of tell the history of a certain, yeah, most of them are kind of historical, of course, uh, you know, t tell the story of a, of a little crease in rock and roll history. Yeah. The one I listened to here recently was the one you did on the one and done, you know, the bands okay. that put out one album and then that was the only one they ever yep. released, which excellent concept. And I think your most recent episode is, I guess, kind of a uh, folks paying homage or tribute to a recently fallen member of the band or yeah, how bands deal with loss, I think I called it. Um, and then, of course, in the rush end of it, it was uh, Neil Peart dealing with, you know, his his uh, his common law wife and his daughter dying, and yes. then how Rush deals with later Neil dying. So it was, yeah, just kind of dealing with loss. But I think every other example was the loss of a band member and what they did with that. You know, did they make a new album? Did they? you know, form other bands and Voivod's example was they had actual, you know, tons and tons of demos kicking around and they actually ended up after his death from cancer, they, they made two complete albums where he's the guitarist. Yep. And I know you didn't touch on it, but obviously the biggest example I can think of of that would be the ACDC situation with back in black, you know, being the, uh, the Bon Scott, uh, homage, so to speak, but, uh, yeah, yeah. very excellent topic. And, I really uh, went back and was going through your list of, of topics and it's the format really lends itself to being able to do that, to just kind of drill down into any, like you said, any little crease in the uh, history of, uh, of rock and, and come up with uh, something yeah. that you can yeah, focus I, on. I, I wanted to make sure it was flexible enough because I also have a video show that I do with my buddy Marco uh, and we have some guests on uh, called the contrarians. And we had a, an original concept where it was, Somebody has to go on and argue that their favorite album by a, by a band happens to be a contrarian choice. And the other guy tells them how you're wrong and the stats are wrong, you know, the gold albums and how many songs are played live. But you go through that very quickly and realize, OK, you can only do so many bands. So we had had to come up with some sort of offshoot concepts and it's still called the contrarians. But I but I wanted to make sure I had something and and also something that wasn't just, you know, ranking the uh, albums of a band and stuff like that, which, you know, I've done many times before and I've asked to go on i've been asked to go on shows and do that kind of thing so so yeah i just wanted it to be an open slate that okay sat, saturday or sunday i can come up with the topic and just and just knock it out yeah and it's and what's great it's so unique like you, you mentioned you know there's so many podcasts out there that'll rank albums or do a track by track and there's just nobody that really does what you're doing with this so it's excellent yeah. concept All i right. enjoy Thanks. it yeah <laughs> so martin let's learn a little bit more about your musical history and play around with something we like to call, is that your vinyl answer? And we'll start yeah. off with asking you, what's the first record you remember buying with your own money? Boy, with my own money, uh, probably I've never been asked that actually. Um, Cause I know, I know ones that were part of like Columbia record club and stuff, but own money, I'd probably say Bachman Turner overdrive one. Okay. Yeah. BTO good yeah. Canadian rock band there. Yeah, it would have been about 72, so I would have been nine. Okay. What part of Canada are you in, Martin? Uh, I'm in Toronto, but I grew up in a small town in British Columbia, Trail, BC. Oh, okay. So you're um, on the opposite so, end of the country now. <laughs> yeah. So been here for 30 years, but I, I grew up where, you know, our, our record mecca was Spokane, Washington or Vancouver. And we had, you know, surprisingly enough, probably three or four pretty decent record departments and stores in trail but i mean it was a small town so i didn't see a lot of concerts uh, but i came out here in around 89 so i've been here for a long time and uh bto they were based out of winnipeg right 
Well, I mean, I guess who I'm thinking of, you know, tracing yeah, it back. That's an, you know, I really don't know. That's a really interesting answer. If they, <laughs> if they were literally based out of there the entire time, I guess they probably were because there were a bunch of brothers and stuff. So yeah, maybe they were, I, I don't know if they ever did gravitate. Uh, I, I read a BTO book years ago, but I don't know if they ever, you know, moved to Toronto or anything like that. Yeah. I actually did point. see BTO live once. They were the very first act at the 1986 Texas jam that wow. uh, Van Hagar was the uh, oh, headliner, but uh, yeah, BTO yeah. opened that show. And, and that was, that was wild to see them after all those years of listening to them. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> do you remember Martin where you bought that BTO record and do you still have it? I still have it. Um, where would I have bought that? That would probably have been either at Kelly's, which was a, a Canadian chain we had, uh, kind of a black, red, and white theme that there's all across the country, hundreds of stores, I believe. Um, I, like every town had a, had a Kelly's um, or at Rock Island Tape Center, where I ended up working and running the record department um, or Union Peters or Little John's. Uh, so <laughs> one of these, it was probably somewhere right in trail. It, it was probably the Kelly's. Yeah. So was Kelly's uh, a record store or was it kind of a drugstore catch-all type place or? No, it was uh, it was a record store and stereo store. Okay. And that's what actually all three of the places that had big record departments in our little town. Trail is a town of 10,000 people. It was 15,000 at one point. Now it's about nine. Um, but it's got this massive Kaminko smelter and it's known as the biggest lead and zinc smelter in the world. And then tr we had the Trail Smoke Eaters, which won the world championship, quote unquote, in 1939 and 1961. So it's sort of famous as a sports town as well. But yeah, just a little, little town. But, uh, you know, thanks to us, actually, part, part of the time, it had good record departments. Excellent. <laughs> now, who do you own the most albums by and which album of theirs is your favorite? Wow. I've never been asked that. Uh, most albums by. So I'm, I'm visualizing, you know, six inches of records or more. Um, probably, you know what? I really think that's probably yes, because there's all these paper goods and everything there's a lot of 12 inch eps and there's a you know thick tour program and all that stuff filling all that up and a lot of different versions so favorite record by yes we did an episode of contrarians on this i went with going for the one 1977 ah yes that is a nice contrarian pick excellent yeah it is excellent yeah. <laughs> yeah. is there a specific album by any artist that you've purchased more times over the years than any other Wow. Um, yeah, I'm not a big one for reissues, but I certainly have gotten, you know, at least, well, actually, you know, my, my favorite, probably the answer to that would be getting the who quadrophenia box set. I love when the final one is a big massive and I've got a couple of the pink Floyd immersion box sets. Mm -hmm. So, so the bigger, more massive, the final version, the better. Uh, but the quadrophenia is, is well, actually Beatles white album is really awesome too. So I got yes. both of those, um, you know, so much to read and a lot of discs and, you know, demos and all that stuff. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's probably my favorite. So quadrophenia, you know, I, I definitely have the old vinyl. I don't, I don't think I had a regular, one in between but uh yeah those and and the pink floyd box sets probably my favorites yeah and you mentioned that white album that 50th anniversary was just unbelievable how much stuff they had on there yeah, it was beautiful yeah. very extensive very extensive yeah. martin who has the biggest vinyl collection of anyone you know and what size is yours uh, start with mine so I can stall a bit. Um, so mine was 11,000 and it's now wow. down to about 5,000. I've sold off so many things to buddies begging me for stuff over the years who come to my office here in Toronto. I've got a, a condo that I bought uh, that I use just as an office and it's where I have everything. Um, so it's shrunk by a lot over those years. I've got a lot of signed items. I got about 3000 signed things in here. Um, but, um, so yeah, it's a lot smaller than it used to be. Uh, so 11 down to five. Let's see, whoever had one that, that was roughly the size of mine, at least. You know, <sighs> Brian Slagle, but I've never seen Brian's, but I'm sure he's got an amazing collection. Um, yeah, there's there's people I know that I've, I haven't seen their collections. Uh, boy. So Martin, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. 11,000 records, how much space does that take up? 
No, oh, not very much. 11,000, no big deal. It's, it's, uh, I've got 28,000 CDs. Um, but wow. a lot of that, we, you know, myself and my buddy Tim Henderson, who has a massive CD collection, he's got the biggest collection I know, but it's mostly CDs. We even went so far at one point to source uh, the little plastic sleeves to buy them so we could chuck out the jewel cases. So, yeah. So that so that's been compressed a lot. So I've got my my eighteen thousand CDs fit along a thirty one foot by seven foot tall wall. Um, so that's yeah, how much you compress can compress CDs down to. But eleven thousand records would be you know six or seven or eight kind of large racks. It's it's okay. not you know you you could you could fit that in a couple small bedrooms if you wanted to or <laughs> one big bedroom. Just as long as you have a couple to spare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Martin, what's your favorite mom and pop record store? Wow. Um, boy, I would say uh, in Toronto, we've had some amazing ones over. No, you know what? I'm going to have to go back to the, the originals um, that we that we would hook out of school and drive down to Spokane, Washington and, and go to all the time. And that was our Shangri-La, like when the new wave of British heavy metal hit and punk and finding all those great things. So there were two that they had there. They're, they're not, they're less ma and pop and more hippie, hippie shop, head shop stores. Right. So yep. we're talking late seventies in the early eighties, strawberry jams and magic mushrooms, two different ones. And they had two different locations in Spokane. Awesome. Now, how far of a drive to Spokane was it? Two and a half hours. Ooh, that's a high and a border, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah. of course. So when you needed your Saxon fix, you went yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there were a few days where you'd you'd show up at school on some chilly autumn morning, and you'd all look at each other, and you'd you'd jump in the unsafe car of of Ken Siemens, and we'd uh, we'd drive over the border and spend our day in Spokane instead of going to school. So <laughs> hey, you can't yeah. beat it. Yeah, you cannot beat it. One last question for you, Martin. What is your all-time favorite cover song? Wow, cover song. Um, gee, that's a good one. Um, you mean a cover version of, yes. a, of an old song, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is a weird answer, but but it, it's one that always comes to mind because I always tell people like like when I'm talking to rock stars, it's like you, you should do more stuff like this. Um, is it Morgana Le Fay? It's it's one of these one of these black mark bands from uh, from overseas that did a cover of ABBA's Voulez Vu and did a power metal version of it and proved that you could make an amazing killer metal song out of out of something if the chords right or the chord sequences are right. Right. Yeah. And so you could you could hear in that song that it's got the Richie Blackmore Led Zeppelin Egypto thing going, and then they just totally heavied it up and made this amazing version of it. So, well, it's a really good example that you cite in in an artist that is from basically a completely different, almost opposite on the spectrum genre, taking yeah. a song and and doing a cover. So yeah, that's those are really good examples when you get those situations. Martin, what is the best way for folks to follow you and to follow the history and five songs podcast on social media. Well, so, so history and five songs, like everything from Pantheon, just to find that alone is super easy. You just Google it a history and five songs with Martin Popoff. That'll get it to you for sure. And it's in like 40 places. Uh, when it comes to social media, um, I'm really good at Facebook, but I'm not good at anything else. And I don't even have a cell phone. So I've never used Instagram, <laughs> um, but you know, and Twitter I have, but I don't really use that well, but we actually have a dedicated history and five songs, Facebook page. Plus I have my regular page and then I have my public persona page, which is more dead than my regular page, but my regular page, I've been at the 5,000 friend limit for years. I'm 3000 over friend requests <laughs> waiting. Right. Uh, it, which really ticks me off because it's the one thing I do properly and, and they put a limit on it. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there is there is the Facebook as well. And then, of course, I've got my uh, my Martin which is where all my books are described. And there's PayPal buttons there and everything. And that's that's one that's per, probably my main source of my income is being a buyer and seller of my own books. So I sign the books and send them out of the office here. So anything that's in print from all the different publishers or anything I self publish, I have my own supply of that. I'm selling mail order all the time. And that's all martinpopoff.com. So that's it. And my email address is Martin P at info Well, I'm glad you mentioned the books, Martin, because you really are a prolific author 
So many. <laughs> and, and you know, like you mentioned on one of your recent episodes, there's the 99 cent eBooks, the, like the quick, yeah. you know, quick reads. So there's all, all sorts of stuff that folks can get to and check out. So definitely give it a, give it a look folks. Martin, thanks so much for being on a really, really appreciate having you on the podcast. No worries, man. This is a lot of fun, Bob. Thank you. Don't worry about it, guys. It's all in the mix. Bend and Scoop is a production of Lukewarm Tallboy Studios. We will return tomorrow morning with the sun. Good evening, and have a good life.